In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a floating hologram inspired text effect right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get right into the video. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects, you want to begin by creating a brand new composition. So we'll go new composition. We'll make sure the width is 1920, the height is 1080, the pixel aspect ratio is square pixels and a frame rate of 23.976. We'll press OK on this and we'll drag some footage into our sequence. So as you can see, I've just got this shot of my laptop. I'm just panning up a little bit and I'm going to put the text just here in this space. So the first step into adding this text is to track the footage. So we go into effects and presets, search for 3D camera tracker. That should be in the perspective folder and then we'll drop that onto our footage. Now we're just going to let Adobe After Effects analyze the footage. This might take a minute, this might take two minutes. Just go away, have a drink, come back, and that should be finished. And there you go. As soon as the computer has finished analyzing the footage, you'll get all of these different tracking points appear on your footage. Now you just want to scrub through and you want to find a point roughly where you want your text to sit. So I want mine to sit above the microphone around here. So I'm just going to select one of these points. I'll select this point here. This red target appears. I'm going to double click and select create text and camera. Now that's going to create a 3D text for me. And as you can see, if I scrub through the footage, that text is going to perfectly sit on top of this microphone. So from here, we just want to go ahead and we want to change the position of this. We want to push this up a little bit and we want to angle this around towards the camera a touch. So we're going to go into the text. We'll select the drop down arrow, go to transform and in transform, we've got position, scale, orientation and all different types of rotation. So I'm just going to rotate this forwards towards the camera. So I'm just going to increase the X rotation and let's play that back make sure that's still sitting where it should be. There we go. That looks really nice. And then I'm just going to adjust another rotation. So I'm just going to increase the Y rotation and add a little bit of Z rotation just to make sure this is straight. And there you go. That's about right. Now from here, I'm just going to increase the size of the font. So I'm going to go into scale, increase the scale. And I'm just going to play this back again, just to make sure that this is sitting where it's supposed to sit. And there you go. That looks really nice. So now we can go through the process of creating the hologram look on the footage. So we're just going to exit out of the transform window and the text window. And then we'll go over into effects and presets and search for blinds. So B L I N D S. And that should be Venetian blinds. Drag Venetian blinds onto the text. We're going to go up to this setting here. Go to transition completion and pull this up to around 30%. And then we'll decrease the width of the Venetian blinds to around 8%. And that's going to give us this nice digital look on the text. Now from here, we're going to go and search for glow. Drop glow onto our text. And we can increase the glow radius. That's going to add a bit more glow to the text. From here, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that text layer. So we'll select the text, hold command C to copy and hold command V to paste. Now you want to make sure that this is sticking to the scene. Yes, it's still sticking. If it's not, then it might be because 3D has deselected. So make sure this 3D button down here is selected. Now, I'm going to select the text underneath. So I'll select the bottom text layer, go to effects and presets and search for tint. Drop tint onto your first text layer or drag tint to the very top of all of those effects. And then you want to select map white to select the white box and we'll select a color of choice. So I'm going to select a blue and I'm going to use this eyedropper tool to select the blue in the scene. So as you can see, I've got a blue light and I'm going to select a blue that is similar to this blue light over here. There you go. That's about right. 
Now, from there, I'm gonna go down to glow. We'll change color A in the glow to blue. And then we'll decrease the glow threshold. We'll increase the glow radius. We'll increase the glow intensity. So we'll pull that all the way up to around 2%. And let's watch that back. There you go. That looks really nice. Now I'm just going to go into text. I'm going to press T on the keyboard to load opacity. And we'll pull this opacity down just a touch. And then we'll do the same for the top layer. Select text 2. We'll press T and pull the opacity down again once more. You don't want to pull this down as much as the other one. You want to pull this down to around 90%. This is just so that we can almost see through the text layer. We want this to be a projection look. So pulling down the opacity is really just going to help to sell that effect. Now that's looking really nice, but we want to go ahead and take this one step further by adding a animation. So we'll go into effects and presets and search for turbulent displace. That should be under distort. You want to drop turbulent displace onto our top text layer. So we'll drop that onto text two. And as you can see, if we just play that back and we solo that layer, that's gonna make this really funky text animation. It looks a little bit too much for what we're going for. So we're really going to reduce this in the turbulent displacement settings. So we'll go to amount, we'll pull this to 10. We'll go to size, we'll pull this to 10. We'll go to the very beginning, select a brand new keyframe on evolution. So press the stopwatch icon, scroll to the very end of the shot. And we're just gonna increase the evolution to around 20. So that's going to do 20 rotations of the evolution. Now we'll just unisolate that layer. So we'll reveal everything again. And we'll just play this back just to make sure that this is doing what we want it to do. There we go. That's starting to look really nice. However, the problem is if this was an actual holographic light, this text was floating in the air and you had these neon lights coming from the text, then the light would be projected on the back wall. It would be projected on all of the surfaces around. It's a light, it's going to emit light. So we need to see that light spilling onto the wall at the back. So we're just gonna scroll to the very beginning. We'll go to layer, new, solid. We'll make sure we select a color which is very similar to the glow color that we chose. Now, as you'll notice, I selected blue earlier, but I changed it to pink during one of the processes. So I'm gonna select a pink light. We'll select one of these pink lights. We'll press OK. We're gonna turn this layer off. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and create a mask around this wall up here. So we'll go up to the pen tool on the top bar of After Effects, and we'll just draw a mask around the top just here. Now we'll press M on the keyboard to load mask, create a new keyframe on mask path by pressing the stopwatch. We'll move one second over to the right and we'll move the position of this mask over to the right. Move another two seconds, we'll move over again. Move over another two seconds, same thing again. Another two, same thing again, we'll move that over and then we'll go to the end and we'll move that over once more. Now, we'll turn that layer back on We'll go into mask one and pull up the mask feather. We'll pull that all the way up to around 250%. Then we'll go to mask opacity and we'll pull this all the way down to a very small number. So we'll pull this down to 30% just so you can see it on the back wall. And then you want to drag that underneath the text layer. So we'll drag that underneath text two and text one. And there you go. We've got that pink light emitting onto that back wall. If it's a little too intense for you, you can always just go into opacity again and pull this down even further. But you just want to get that nice glow on that back wall to make it look realistic. And now from here, all that we have left to do is to just do some basic color grading. So we'll select absolutely everything in the composition. We'll right click, go in to pre-compose. We can rename the pre-composition if we like. Press OK on that. We'll go into effects and presets. Search for Lemetri Color. We'll drop Lemetri Color onto text. We'll go to Basic Correction, and we can select a lot of our choice. Now, I'm gonna select D21 D-Log C. 
that is quite bright and quite contrasted. Of course, you're free to adjust the exposure. If you like, you can adjust the contrast. Just get this to a point that you're happy with. But if you feel like this is too intense, then all you have to do is copy the text composition, paste that in so we've got a copy, press T on the top one, pull down the opacity to around 50%, go to the bottom text layer, and we'll delete the metric color from the bottom. Now, if we go to our top one again, if we decrease the opacity, it's going to decrease the metric color. If we increase, it's going to increase. So find the number that you're happy with. I'm gonna go for around 40%, and there we go. I'm very happy with the look of that. That is our hologram inspired text effect right inside of Adobe After Effects Now Complete. So all that I've got left to say is thank you for watching. I hope this helped. And if you have any video requests or any effects that you would like to see in a future video, then please do drop them in the comment section below. And I promise I will make a video if I know how to do the effect. So thank you for watching and see you next time.